Welcome to Metal Casting Lecture Series by Professor Joyjeet Ghosh. This is the first lecture of a series of lectures. This lecture will be on fundamentals of casting processes. He will be discussing about casting and casting processes, advantages and limitations of casting, applications of casting and classification of casting processes. So, do not miss and watch the full video. For the next video in the lecture series, please click the suggested video link above. You may also click on the playlist at end of the video to access all the videos. Please subscribe subscribe this channel and yes do not forget to like and share also click on the bell icon to receive instant information of new videos uploaded thank you hello friends welcome to this lecture on casting this is the first lecture of a series of lecture that i'll be delivering on casting and casting related process in this lecture i'll be discussing about the fundamentals of casting process what is casting process uh, advantages limitations applications and um, classifications of various types of casting processes so let's not waste time and start our discussions so casting is basically a manufacturing process where we melt the metal and or material rather uh, we melt the metal and pour it in a cavity which is created uh, in a in a molding material uh, that cavity has the shape of the final product and in that cavity we pour the molten metal the molten metal solidifies inside the cavity we pour it and allow it to solidify inside the cavity and once it solidifies we take out from the uh, molding material <coughs> the solidified metal is the product now how we create the mold and uh, the way or the nature in which we create the mold and the way we pour the molten metal varies for different casting processes. There are different types of casting processes. Most common type is sand casting process. And a uh, very important fact about casting, casting is not a new technology. This technology uh, was used uh, 3000 years ago by the Egyptians for making jewelries. So, <clears throat> gradually over the years, a large number of casting processes are available uh, nowadays. Of all the processes, sand casting is the most common type. And our major part of our discussions will be limited to sand casting. And of course, we will be having certain uh, learning about the other casting processes also. But detailed study will be mainly on sand casting process. Now, you can see uh, liquid flows. And therefore, uh, liquid can take the shape of the container. This is the basic working principle of casting. And in a single step, that is melting the metal and pouring it a cavity, we can give it a shape. In other manufacturing processes, to give a shape to a product requires sequential steps, which is not, not the case in case of casting. In messing, let's say it may uh, it may be a a turning process followed by a drilling process followed by a rimming process followed by a threading process. Uh, so different processes are performed sequentially to get a product. Whereas in a casting, you just pour it, the melt the metal and pour it in the shape cavity. Of course, to make the shape cavity, <coughs> uh, there are different processes available. But in a single step, you generate a complex shape. And talking of complex shape, the USP of a casting process is that it can manufacture complex shape and therefore it is very important for me to point out that when to select casting process. A particular product can be manufactured by machining, can be manufactured by forming, can be manufactured by casting. When to select casting process. The primary criteria of selecting casting process is the complexity of the shape. If the shape is complex, then it is better to go for casting process. If there is no other limitations, <clears throat> that is the primary criteria. And of course, there are number of uh, there are number of other parameters like the material property that is required, the number of quantity that is required. All these are there, of course. Accuracy, surface finish, all these parameters are there. But the major parameter, or the main parameter that decides the selection of casting process, is the complexity of the product. So let us discuss the advantages of casting. As I have said, uh, the most attractive features of casting is that we can cast any shape in one operation. 
It is possible to cast any material, be it ferrous or non-ferrous. Any material which can be melted can be cast. Part of any size, shape and intricacy can be cast. One of the advantages is that large size um, casting can be done and smaller size casting can also be done. The necessary tools required for casting are simple and inexpensive, mainly for sand casting. The other casting processes which are quite expensive. Casting generally cools uniformly from all sides. If your design is proper, and you expect uh, you will be expecting that the properties are uniform from all sides. And of course, in a casting when you melt metal, uh, you can add different alloying elements, you can add different uh, phase material and you can manufacture composite components also. And some casting process, not all, is capable of producing components which can be almost ready to use or it may require a very small amount of post-processing. These are the advantages of casting. Of course, every good thing has its own limitation and of course, casting, some casting processes are suitable for mass production, not all limitations uh, one major limitations of casting particularly sand casting is the dimensional accuracy and surface finish are not up to the mark and requires post processing like machining uh, <coughs> post casting machining is required to bring it to its required dimension and to increase the surface finish or improve the surface finish and sand casting is also labor intensive and most casting processes are defect frauds and uh, it's very difficult to remove the defects. And one point I want to make at this point of time is that casting is a trial and error process. You cannot, how, however experienced you are, you cannot get your design, product design <clears throat> and casting design correct in a single uh, go. You do it, you realize your mistake, try to improve on it and again do it, again realize the mistake and try to correct on it. So likewise, ultimately after let's say 2-3 trials, you get the um, final design of the casting and you carry out <coughs> the casting processes in required numbers. So point is that casting is a trial and error process according to me. Limitations of mechanical properties. Now uh, the casting uniformly and the properties are uniform and since there is a recrystallization and regrowth, uh, grain growth, the properties will be having lesser hardness compared to those which is formed or machined and casting may require heat treatment and of course you are dealing with hot metal so safety hazards is there and environmental issues are also there because of the melting of the metal. So these are the limitations of casting. So why do we apply casting? I'll show you uh, some of the images. From that you will understand that the different casting processes are applied in different <coughs> applications. Cylinder blocks, machine tools, piston rings, mill rolls, wheels, water supply pipes and bells. These are some of the very very limited uh, list I have shown here. The applications are really wide uh, and uh, <coughs> frequently used in industry. These are some of the images of casting processes, sand casting, investment casting, die casting and you have see here there are the sand casting products. This is also sand casting product. You can see a ductile iron compressor housing. It's a pulley on the right side and this is a piston. The figure on the left side is the as cast product. And this is the finished product. So really after casting, you can see these are the risers, these are the sprue attached to the casting, which will be cut off by machining process. And then see these <coughs> piston um, ring groups are made by machining process and entire thing is finished by machining process. So this is the aluminium casting. Now the classification of casting. Casting can be divided into two categories, one which uses a expendable mold or single use mold. Expendable or single use as the name suggests, that means the mold will be, make, will be making for single use, 
that means after the casting the mold will be broken and the casting will be taken off the other part is the other type of casting processes which uses a multiple uses mold or rather we call it dyes <clears throat> so under single use mold we can have a single use pattern and we can have a multiple use pattern single use pattern under single use pattern we have investment casting which uses a wax pattern and foam pattern in loft foam airbody pattern casting and we uh, also there is another classification of expendable mold is reusable pattern that is multiple use pattern where we use the metal pattern or a wooden pattern in sand casting in co2 mold casting and cell molding etc and of course plaster mold ceramic mold casting all these casting processes uses a pattern uses pattern which is used multiple times other half is multiple use mold is multiple use mold under multiple use mold you have permanent mold casting variations of permanent mold casting and under variations of permanent mold casting you have slash casting low pressure casting vacuum casting then you have die casting all these uses a mold which is reused hot chamber die casting cold chamber die casting and the die casting and we have centrifugal casting three types of centrifugal casting two centrifugal casting semi centrifugal casting and centrifuging and we have continuous casting which is used in integrated steel plants these are the different types of casting processes Okay, so casting terminologies we will be discussing in the next lecture. Thank you for patiently hearing this lecture. If you have any doubts, you can mail me or you can put it in the comment. Box.